In a little over half an hour, we've transformed our static markup into a dynamic site using templates and chunks. We're also dynamically generating content with the Wayfinder menu building snippet. And we've created a custom input field to allow for easy management of graphic content. Now let's mix all these elements together and make ModX gold. In an earlier tutorial, we mentioned there was some magic to work yet on the news page. Let's look at that now. At the moment, our posts are all listed together on the news page, complete with post content. But what if we had a lot of posts? And what if each post contained significantly more content? This page would get very long very fast, and navigating through it would be less than user-friendly. As with everything ModX, there are several ways to solve this problem. There's a component in the ModX Extras repository called Articles that makes creating news or blog pages essentially a one-click affair. However, for this tutorial, we're going lean and mean, just enough for the functionality we need. Mostly for learning purposes, but also because our pages will actually perform faster doing it this way. We've got a lot to cover, so in this tutorial we're going to skip over some of the minute details. If you haven't watched the previous episodes in this series, you may want to do that now. Otherwise, let's dive in. The first thing we'll do is set up a new template for the individual posts. We'll duplicate the news page template and call this one news article template. Under the template variables tab, we can see our image TV that we created in the previous tutorial, and we're going to confirm we have access to it in this template. Back in the create edit template tab, we'll add the article wrapper and the H4 heading element inside the page content div. We'll use the resource ID as part of the wrapper ID, the page title tag to populate the heading text, and for the metadata, in this case the publishing date, we'll use the published on tag. Remember, tags with the asterisk token are simply placeholders for values derived from resource fields and template variables. We can add the output from our image TV like this, two open square brackets, an asterisk, image, two closing square brackets. Now we close the article wrapper after the content tag and save our template. The next order of business is to break up our content into individual resources. The most obvious benefit of this is that each article will be available at its own URI. Remember, URI is an acronym for Uniform Resource Identifier, which is why ModX resources are called resources in the first place. You can see that by right-clicking on the parent resource News, we can select Quick Create and then Document to quickly and easily create child resources. The Quick Create modal window only displays the basic tabs and fields for editing, but this is all we need right now. We've put the title of the post into the page title field, pasted the post content into the content field, assigned the new template to each new resource, and set the resource as published. When we view them, we see the default image placeholder defined in the image TV, along with our heading and post metadata. The rest of the layout is the same as the parent news page, only we are viewing content from one article instead of all three. Speaking of the parent news resource, we no longer need this hard-coded content, so let's delete it from the resource content field. Instead, we'll leverage another powerful ModX snippet called Get Resources to list content excerpts from each article. You can install Get Resources via package management, just like we did with the Wayfinder snippet in the tutorial on snippets. Here in the news page template under the content tag, we're going to add a call to the Get Resources snippet like this, two open square brackets, Get Resources, to closing square brackets. When we view the page, we see some PHP arrays. Get resources is getting all the child resources and returning them as objects. The reason the output is an array rather than HTML markup is because we haven't defined an output template. Remember, ModX lets you use your own markup for its output, but the only downside is you have to use your own markup. Luckily, we have some. We're going to copy the wrapper element, heading element, and metadata from our news article template. Then we'll quick create a chunk, call it news underscore item underscore TPL, and paste this markup into the chunk code field. We need to change the tokens used in these placeholders to plus signs instead of asterisks. When you use a snippet to return the values from a resource, you must use the plus sign token instead of the asterisk. It behaves like a placeholder, which we talked about in the episode on chunks. Also, let's not forget that these are excerpts that will display on the main news page. We want to let readers view the full article at its own URI. 
we'll wrap the page title tag in an anchor element, linking to the article with Modex's special make URL tag, two open square brackets, a tilde, followed by the ID of the resource you want to link to, and in this case, we'll use the placeholder for the ID of the resource currently being returned by get resources, and then two closing square brackets. Note, there are nested tags here. Modex will first parse the innermost tag, and the result, in this case the ID, is used to form the outer tag. If this were resource ID 10, the outer tag would look like this. Two open square brackets, tilde, 10, and then two closing square brackets, which returns the unique URI for that resource. One more thing to note. With get resources, TV placeholders need to be prefixed with the string TV dot. So we'll add that to our image TV placeholder. Once we've converted all the placeholders, we'll save the chunk. Then we need to make one edit to the news page template, and that's to add a property to the get resources snippet call like this, TPL equals news underscore item underscore TPL. We'll save the template, and when we view the page, we see that Get Resources is using our chunk as an output template, but only the titles and metadata are displayed, nothing else. This is because by default, Get Resources doesn't return values from the resources content fields, nor TVs. Both of these are relatively expensive queries as far as performance goes, so Get Resources was designed not to do them unless you specifically tell it to. You do this by adding the properties include content equals one and include TVs equals one. Let's view the page again. We see that our image is not an image, but instead a path to the image file. By default, Get Resources doesn't process every TV according to its output type, because again, there's a performance hit. We could add the property process TVs equals one to take care of that, but let's use a more optimized strategy instead. The TV when processed was simply wrapping the file path with an image element. We can do that ourselves in the news underscore item underscore TPL chunk. We'll wrap the image TV placeholder with an image element tag. And let's be good little web developers and add some alt text as well. We're going to use the page title field along with the string photo. Then we'll save the chunk. When we view the page again, it's a bit overwhelming. We have all the content from every resource, same as before, but we've also added an image. So the page has even more content than before, and duplicate content, because each full article is also available at its unique URI. What we really want on this page are excerpts and thumbnails. We're now going to introduce you to another feature of Modex, Output Modifiers. Output Modifiers, also called Output Filters, are a built-in set of simple yet powerful PHP scripts that perform a variety of useful tasks. In this case, we're going to use the ellipsis filter. In our news underscore item underscore TPL chunk, we'll add a colon after the string content and before the closing square brackets in the content placeholder. Then we add a string for the output modifier name, ellipsis, followed by an equal sign, a backtick, the number 200, and another backtick. Output modifiers are written to accept an input value, in this case, the contents of the content field of each resource, and modify it based on the options set. In this case, 200 is the desired character limit. Any content above the character limit will be replaced by an ellipsis. When we view the page, we see this is now the case. Now for thumbnails. We can handle that with a useful Modex Extra called PHP Thumbs Up. We install it via package management. The snippet can be used like a Modex output modifier. In our news underscore item underscore TPL chunk, we add a colon after the image TV placeholder name, followed by PHP Thumbs Up, an equal sign, a backtick and our options. In this case, W equals 100, H equals 100, and ZC equals 1. Don't worry, this may look cryptic, but all it does is define the options for creating a thumbnail out of the image specified in the TV. 100 pixels width, 100 pixels height, zoom cropped. We'll add a class to the image element, and with a bit of CSS, we can see on the front end, we now have thumbnails for each article image, floated left. This is pretty great so far, but what happens when the site grows and there are numerous articles to list on this page? Probably sooner than later, we're going to want to paginate the listing. The Modex Extras repo has a handy snippet called Get Page. You use it by wrapping it around your Get Resources call. In the News Page template, we're going to modify our Get Resources snippet call so that it actually calls Get Page. This is after we download and install Get Page via the package manager, of course. The property that we're going to pass to get page to identify the snippet we're wrapping is the element property. In this case, element equals get resources. We're also going to add a limit of five. 
Notice that we've used the exclamation mark as a prefix in the snippet call. This tells ModX not to cache the results of this snippet call. The reason is that depending on which page of the listing a visitor is requesting, the output will be different. Each request may differ in this sense, so we cannot cache the output or pagination won't work. It'll get stuck, so to speak, on a cached result. GetPage sends the pagination links to a placeholder. By default, it is page.nav. We're going to wrap the placeholder with an unordered list element because the default output for the pagination links is a set of list items. You can customize this output, but it will do just fine for our purposes here. Now when we view the page, nothing seems to have changed because we only have three articles to list and the limit we set was five. We'll fix that in a moment, but first let's take a look at the source. We see that we have an empty UL wrapper. This isn't ideal, so here's what we'll do. In the template, we'll call the placeholder again and add a modex output modifier, not empty. And as the option, we'll enclose our markup with pagination links. Then we have to end the option string with a backtick and two closing square brackets. This can look confusing, so let's go through it bit by bit. First, we're calling the page.nav placeholder. Modex will move straight on to the innermost tag and parse that. Well, when there are only three articles on the page, get page defines no value in the placeholder, so this is empty. And so is the outermost placeholder tag. It is empty as well. The output modifier is a conditional modifier. If the input is not empty, output the following. In this case, the input is empty, so the condition isn't met and nothing is output, including the wrapper UL element. If we save the template and look at the source on the front end, we see this is the case. If there was a value in the placeholder, the condition would evaluate true and the markup here would be rendered. Let's test this. We'll add three more resources by simply duplicating the existing articles. Now when we see the page, there are pagination links here. If we click on the page two link, it takes us to page two of the listing. Note, however, we're at the same URL. Only a URL parameter has been added to pass the requested page number to the get page snippet. There's a lot to digest in this tutorial, and we've really come a long way from our little static HTML site. However, there's still more to come. In the next episode, we're going to use chunks and snippets and template variables to make our own custom widgets that can be reused throughout the site. Mm -hmm.